Star Wars is one of the most widely known and successful franchises of all time, and as such it needs no real introduction. And over the years a lot of characters have appeared in the different TV shows, comic books, movies and TV series and video games. But some of the most memorable characters of the films are the Sith Lords, powerful warriors who wield the dark side of the force. And this video is going to go over the lands and cores of the Sith Lords that are featured in the live action movies. Now before we begin, for those who don't already know, lands and cores are organisations that have rings that give their wearers superpowers, and they are powered by different emotions, and in order to wield one of these rings you have to have a strong connection to the emotion that powers it. And these different lands and cores are love, fear, avarice, will, hope, compassion and rage. And they are also the lands and cores of the black lands and core of death and the white lands and core of life and the newest lantern core of the ultraviolet light, though no one knows exactly what emotion powers this particular lantern core, it is believed to be shame. And with that out of the way, let's get on with it. Darth Sidious Now when it comes to the evil emperor, the obvious choices are of course fear and death. After all, the guy has killed billions that we know of, he's even wiped out entire species all across the universe, so he fully qualifies for the death lantern core and by extension the Fear Lantern Core. After all the only guy who comes close to being feared more is Darth Vader, and that's Palpatine's apprentice. So he's definitely a scary person and he fully qualifies for these two Lantern Cores. But I think that the Orange Lantern Core of Avarice suits him better. After all this is a man who not only wanted it all, but literally has it all. His greed is on a whole other level. Littlefinger wanted Westeros, Lex Luthor wants the Earth, but Palpatine wanted galaxies. Galaxies plural. I mean this guy has so much stuff that he actually had to start blowing up his own planets. I mean can you even imagine how much that he is destroying? We're talking quadrillions in precious gems, minerals and resources, and still he doesn't even feel it, because it's nothing compared to his overall wealth. I mean this guy has an unimaginable amount of stuff, and yet he still wants more. In fact, he might actually be the biggest personification of avarice that there is in fiction. I mean, we never actually find out the full extent of his empire, but it's clearly colossal, and he was definitely up there with having the most of any character ever. So I think avarice is without question the lands and core for him. Darth Maul In the first scene that Darth Maul speaks, we hear him say his infamous line. At last we will reveal ourselves to the Jedi. At last we will have revenge. And if that doesn't make it clear that he belongs in the Red Lands and Core of Rage, then the rest of his life surely does. He is nothing but rage and revenge, starting with killing the Jedi Qui-Gon Jinn, and after he does he also tries to kill Obi-Wan. Of course as we know, Obi-Wan chops him in half, but Darth Maul's story doesn't end here, because he doesn't die, he survives, fueled by his hatred for Obi-Wan. You cannot imagine the depths I would go to to stay alive, fueled by my singular hatred for you. He becomes a twisted creature consumed with the need for revenge. Even when he comes back, all he wants is to kill Obi-Wan. He goes on to kill innocent people in villages, planets and space stations, all so he can lure Obi-Wan to him and kill him. All he wants is his revenge. He becomes so consumed with it that his entire life becomes dedicated to revenge. So much so that after the Jedi Order is destroyed and the Empire has risen, he actually manages to find Obi-Wan on Tatooine, something that even Vader failed to do with all of the Empire's vast resources. Though sadly, even though he spent all these years desperately trying to get his revenge, when he finally got there to have his moment, he lacked the skill. And so in this final duel, Obi-Wan kills him with relative ease. But throughout his entire life we have seen nothing but anger, hatred and an unstoppable need for vengeance, meaning that there really is no other lantern core for him. And even in his final moments after Obi-Wan has ended his life, his final words are still talking about revenge. He will avenge us. Darth Tyrannus even though he does become the Sith Lord Darth Tyrannus, I'm still going to be referring to him as Count Dooku, because that's how I really think of this character, and I know a lot of other people do. Now when it comes to the Sith, the obvious lantern core choices for them are of course the strong negative emotions, as this is where the Sith draw their power from. 
And though Dooku does inspire great fear throughout the Clone Wars and could easily be a contender for the Sinestro Lantern Corps, I actually think a much better choice for him is the Green Lanterns of Willpower. And though bad guys don't usually belong in this core, especially not Sith Lords because as I said they're mainly obsessed with the negative emotions, I think the Dooku does belong here as his willpower is one of the most powerful that we ever see in the Star Wars universe. Though obviously Darth Sidious was his master and was in control of the Sith plans and movements, Count Dooku was the face of those plans. He was the one who carried them out and saw them to fruition. He arranged for the clone army to be built, he was even the one who found Jenga Fett in the first place and hired him to be the very person that the entire army was cloned from. He organised the Separatists to fight the Republic and led them through the Clone Wars, organising everything so that in the end the Sith Lords would win and rule the galaxy. And again Sidious obviously helped, but for the most part Dooku was the one who made all this happen and he is the one who brought an end to the Republic. It all came to fruition thanks to his cunning and his strength of will. And it's because of this that I think willpower makes the most sense for him. Darth Vader Now at first glance the right lantern core for him would seem to be rage, as he was consumed by his anger and hatred for the Jedi and actually became a Sith Lord. But that's more when he's Anakin Skywalker. When he does actually become a Sith Lord this changes slightly. And although the hate remains when he becomes Darth Vader, his rage isn't so overpowering. It's as though he learned not to be so reckless and wild through his injuries, and that because of these injuries he sustained, his hatred solidified into something far deadlier and far more fearsome, which is why he has to be in the lands and core of fear because he has turned his hatred and self-loathing into a force of nature that is feared across the galaxy. His merest presence fills all those around him with dread. Now this is partly because of his reputation, as he has acted as the Emperor's enforcer for years, led his armies and conquered entire planets, hunted and killed Jedi across the universe and dealt harshly with anyone who displeases him in any way. You have failed me for the last time, Admiral. But it's also due to his strength in the dark side, as he uses his powers to instill fear in others and has an aura of dark energy around him that intimidates everyone near him and fills them with dread. Do you feel that? The cold. And let's face it, when it comes to the scariest bad guys there is, Vader is definitely in the top 5. He's one of the scariest bad guys in fiction and almost certainly the most feared man in the Star Wars universe. Next to the Emperor of course. Kylo Ren Now we know very little about Kylo Ren at this point. We've had mentions to his past in the films and we've had a few flashbacks, but not a lot of information is given, not really. Even still, his Lantern Corps is very easy to label, and that is of course the Red Lantern Corps of Rage, as he is consumed by his anger and his hatred, so much so that it actually led to him killing his own father. And this same anger is fueling his entire story arc of the new trilogy, which seems to be entirely about him going out to kill his former master, Luke Skywalker. And his anger is so overwhelming that he even lashes into these crazy wild outbursts. Now in truth he wants to be in the Fear Lantern Corps as he wants to be as feared and respected as Darth Vader was. And even though he could qualify for this as he does inspire great fear, sadly his anger and his lust for revenge on Skywalker mark him for the Red Lantern Corps as anger all but radiates from him. Snoke Now since we know practically nothing on this guy at this time, it's really hard to put him in a Lantern Corps. All we can say for certain about him is that he is feared by almost all of the galaxy, so fear is the logical choice. And sadly that's all I can really say on this. There are a lot of fan theories and some of them are actually quite good, such as the theory that Palpatine is actually Snoke, either in the same body that's been even more damaged or in some sort of clone body that has also been damaged. And although I really do like that as a fan theory, it hasn't actually been confirmed in the movies as yet. And considering how this new trilogy has gone so far, it does seem unlikely that that's going to be the case. 
Now, hopefully more information on his character will emerge in future films and we'll find out his backstory. But it doesn't really matter what information comes out, he will always 100% qualify for the Sinestro Lantern Corps. So again, it's the logical choice for him to get the Yellow Ring. And that is the Lantern Corps for the Sith Lords of Star Wars. Now you'll have noticed that I haven't got over General Grievous Lantern Corps or the Lantern Corps of Ventress and Savage Press from the Clone Wars series. And this is because although they do use lightsabers, they were never actually true Sith Lords, so I haven't included them in this video. But what do you think of my choices? Do you agree with the Lantern Corps that I've put these Sith Lords in? Or would you have gone with different Lantern Corps altogether? Be sure to let us know in the comments. And I'd just like to say a quick thank you to those who made this video possible by donating to the Needle Mouse Productions page on Patreon. And as always, thanks for watching and feel free to subscribe, share, like and comment.